talk of forgiving some student debt with executive action is heating up on Capitol Hill. Chuck Schumer, Adam Schiff, Elizabeth Warren, among others who have been endorsing that idea in the Biden era. That's right. People's Policy Project President Matt Brunig, he did a deep dive into some of the numbers last week, and he's going to join us to discuss further implications of student loan forgiveness. Good to see you, Matt. Thank you for joining us. Great to us. see you, Matt. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Matt, so break down this policy, uh, who it would disproportionately affect, whether you personally think it's a good idea. How do you think about the student debt problem and forgiveness and all of that? Yeah, so it, it's a very interesting problem or an interesting policy issue because who it affects, whether you think about them as the uh, you know disproportionately high income, which is true, or disproportionately low wealth, which is also true. Uh, both both of these things are true, and so you, it kind of muddles the picture because usually a policy, you know, if it helps high income people, it also helps wealthy people, or if it helps low income people, it also helps low wealth people. But in this case, you have a split where some of the least wealthy people in the country have the most debt, obviously because debt makes you, <laughs> uh, you know, have low wealth, whereas some of the the highest income people in the in the country also have the most well uh, most debt. So. It's a it's a bit of a mixed bag in that respect. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, as as far as policies go, you know, if you're thinking about facing down a pandemic, it's not the best idea as far as like getting money into people's pockets, letting them spend um, and that sort of thing. But if we're in a situation where you can't get anything done, the Republicans are blocking everything in the Senate, then you know it, it's got it's going to help some on, in, in terms of stimulus. So uh, you know, I guess my my position now is if that's where you wind up, then you should probably do it. Well, I think that's part of the, the problem with the, is the context, right? Because, look, if we had our full list of options of available choices, policy preferences, who we direct money to, et cetera, this may not be the very first thing on the top of the list. But that's not the pr political reality that we're facing. We're very likely to have Mitch McConnell in control of the Senate. Even if we don't, you'll be having to get you know people like Joe Manchin on board with whatever you ultimately do. So the the context of the conversation is okay. What can you do through directly through executive action? And this is one of the policies that it seems like, based on precedent and some decent precedent in that regard, you could actually do just through executive power. That's right. Yes, there's. Um uh, a theory out there that under the Higher Education Act, the uh, de uh, Department of Education has the ability to adjust these loans and to choose not to collect certain amounts of uh, debt, you know, which they do regularly because some people just default and you're never going to be able to collect this, so they write them off. And so the idea is to use that authority to write it all off and, and you wouldn't need to get McConnell's approval or Joe Manchin's approval uh, to make that happen. And so if that's the situation you find yourself in, and you know we're we're facing down a huge recession. It, you know it's better than nothing. Um, and and to the extent that you say, well, this is not really that fair to people who didn't go to college, um, which who are often worse off than people who did. And it's not really fair to say people who paid off their loans. Like you can make all those points, but if we can't make a better policy because we can't get anything through the Senate and this is all you can do, then, then maybe this is the best you can do. And, and to the extent that it causes an economic stimulus, you know, hey, if, I'm, if I didn't go to college, I would rather have the economy stronger <laughs> than right. weaker, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's the eternal question. I mean, one of the things I talked about here, Matt, was just about how it might be even seen politically as a basically a bailout of, the vo of your own voters when not necessarily something that would benefit others. How do you think about that element in particular? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a huge risk for sure, because, uh, you know, the first thing GOP is going to do, which they've already been kind of um, foreshadowing, is they're going to say, look, uh, the Democrats are bailing out uh, college educated voters. They're bailing out people on the coast. They don't care about working class people. That's how they're going to play this kind of thing. Um, and, you know, who knows how that, uh, you know, plays out in the long run, I guess, in terms yeah. of, uh, you know, polit po the politics of it. Uh, so yes. it is is a little bit worrisome in that re respect. So, yeah. Are there other potential executive actions this could be paired with that would help to ameliorate that political potential backlash? You know, I, I don't know of too many. I mean, there are, you know, people have definitely put some you know, there's a whole list of executive actions that are possible, um, but this one is, is so overshadows anything else. You know, it's hard to hard to you know, to imagine pairing it with anything in particular. I mean, there are some things that you can do, for example, in the Department of Labor to make 
more people covered by overtime rules. Um, there are things you could do potentially in the Department of Labor and the National Labor Relations Board to help uh, gig workers who are working for Uber and Lyft um, to, you know, so that there's, there's some things, but those things take time. They may not be effective. The courts might blow them up. Uh, it's it's n- nothing close to here's, you know, one and a half trillion dollars. You know? Right. Yeah. And finally, Matt, what is your perspective on what the state of the economy that Joe Biden is likely to walk into will be? Um, we're, re- we're actually covering this morning some economists projecting a double dip recession as some of the pandemic era protections uh, end at the end of the year. Uh, but meanwhile, look, we've got vaccine candidates. Some vaccines may be ro- rolled out to most vulnerable populations end of December. Certainly by spring, people start to have access to a vaccine. So how are you weighing those things and thinking about those things? Yeah, the economy looks like it's going to be pretty weak. Uh, it was kept afloat by what I call the super dole, which were the IRS payments, 1200 per adult, 500 per child, and then the $600 per week unemployment benefit. Um, these were massive sums of money, um, one of the most generous amounts of money like in the developed world that were put out for the uh, coronavirus recession. And not, not only did you know that put a lot of cash in people's hands, but we know that people saved a lot of that and they're starting to spin that out as well. And so now you know the, the money they had in their account that maybe they put aside for, from those checks, that, that's starting to go dry as well. And so you know we're gonna be in a pretty rough spot, I think. Um, so unless we get something going stimulus wise. Yeah, I think you're right there, Matt. Thank you for joining us, man. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Matt. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Next on Rising, will the Biden team push quick action on stimulus? We're going to discuss that when Rising continues. <laughs> 